Hi, good afternoon. My name is Darren from DKI Auto Detailing and Supply, and we also have uh, Jeremy. How's it going? My name is Jeremy Loki. I, I have Firehouse Detail Maui here in Maui, Hawaii. Um, I would like to say thank you for joining us this afternoon, and um, we're going to discuss about how to wash your car. Um, so the first step is we're going to use this product called Brake Buster. It's in your bucket. It's a non-acid wheel cleaner. Um, let's see. Sorry. Do you, do you let me speak? Okay. Two more. So is this a dumb question? Like, are we actually, like, I've got my car here. Like, are we? I was like, sorry, you cut off one more time. That was the idea, Lauren, to um, wash your car as they were washing it. <laughs> but, okay, I got a car. But then a lot of us, you know, like, couldn't get the setup because I'm at work. So, um, anyway, so that's awesome, Lauren. <laughs> so I can, okay, I, okay. I'll wash it. <laughs> oh, Evan's got a question. Which one? He's, which one? A break, oh, what oh. So the per the purple one is the wheel cleaner. So it's a non-acid wheel, yeah, exactly that one. So it's a non-acid wheel cleaner and it's really good for rims and tires and it's really safe because it's not an acid. Uh, it's good for general, you know, you can see right here, he's, he's, he's washing the, the wheel wells along with the rims and tires. But the number one rule whenever you wash your rims and tires is you wanna make sure that the rims are cool to the touch they're not hot. You didn't just drive around. Um, oh, yes. The first thing you you can see him doing is he'll pre-treat inside the wheel wells, and then he'll hit the tire, uh, the tire, and then he'll hit the hit the wheel, and you'll just let it sit for a little bit and let that thing emulsify all the dirt before you start agitating it with any kind of brushes or towels. Just let it sit and do the work for a little bit. Like this one too. So as you can see, it's starting to break down all the dirt. It's starting to turn brown all in this area. So what it's doing, is actually lifting off all of the dirt and debris and the road grime off of the reel and off of the tires so that it's gonna help you when you rinse it off so that you won't scrub it into the rim and scratch it. And it'll make it a lot easier to clean. What is, can you tell us what the product is again? Can you show it to us again? Sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this product is Brake Buster. That's it. And you can also dilute this down one part water to one part cleaner. And, it, and you can stretch it out a little bit based on how dirty your, your rims and tires are. Need some more. So we'll start at the wheel well, we'll scrub the wheel well down. If you don't have a brush, you can use a towel. Then you'll rinse off the wheel well. You'll go to the tire. You go ahead and scrub the tire with a stiff bristle brush. You don't want something too, too stiff because you don't want to scratch the rim. So you can see all of the dirt coming off of the rim. It's nice and brown. And then you want to use a, a, a rag and, or, or a brush if you have a soft brush and do the face of the rims. So you always want to start off with your rims and tires because it's the dirtiest part of the vehicle. You don't want to ever start off with the paint and then go down to the rims because you might kick up all that dirt and debris back up onto the paint. So you want to start at the dirtiest spot on the vehicle, which is your rims and tires. I feel like I'm not doing anything. <laughs>
So if you guys have any questions, uh, I'll be more than willing to have some questions I can answer right now. If you guys have any answer or questions about the rims and tires. Um, so there's a question about um, where we can buy these products. And I guess I could answer it. You can order it from Darren Ishihara. And we'll give you that information um, in the future. And all of the products, the, uh, the people who did receive, um, the first 10 people um, received the products. Um, they were all from Darren. Mm -hmm. And um, they're like the best quality products. Yeah, so P PS is a, has been around for a long time. They're based out of California. Uh, they recently started this um, double black line, which is the Shine All, the bead maker, along with the, the uh, Brake Buster. And there's a couple other products that, that they have. And what they did was they simplified it for both professionals and your regular consumers. So all of these products are really easy to use. And they're really, really, as far as quality products. They're not stuff that you know is is run of the mill or watered down. These are these are professional grade products that is also easy to use for consumers. Do you do mobile detailing? I do. Me? Yeah. Whoever. Oh, I I do oh. mainly <laughs> I mainly do ceramic coatings and, and paint correction. Oh. Um, that's kind of what what my main part of my business is and. Uh, Darren is a distributor for PNS. I, I've done a lot of work with them in the mainland with uh, some projects that, that you know I've been fortunate to be a part of. So I, I, I got to know them really well. And this person that is named after, uh, Mr. Rennie Doyle, that's actually my mentor. So I, I, I know these products really well, and so does Darren. So if anybody has any questions about these products, go ahead and let, let us know. I'll we'll be more than happy to help. Feel lost. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Let me prep the bucket. Yeah. So as soon as you got your rims and tires all cleaned. Uh, you, we can start prepping our bucket for soap and water. If you can, get a separate bucket and use it just with clean water. So you want one bucket with solution, one bucket with water. That way when you're rinsing out, when you do a panel and you rinse out the, rinse out the um, wash mitt, you're, you're dropping a lot of that dirt that was on the car into the other wash mitt before you put it in this one. So here we have a... This is an auto fiber uh, wash mitt. It has a foam insert inside. I don't know if you can see it. So when you put your soap in, I usually like to put the soap into the mitt. So of course use it to dilution. And then you just put some inside here and then you put it in a bucket. Whoa. Rather than pouring it straight in there, because if you, if you start to agitate it with water, a lot of the soap and solution will, will bounce out. So if you if you put it in here, at least it'll keep it'll keep your wash mitt with a lot of soap and, and suds. You don't need a lot of, of of bubbles for it to work. As long as you're going according to the um, the dilution on the bottle. So what he's doing now is he's he's pre rinsing the vehicle to make sure that he gets off as much of the loose contamination as possible. So that way, when you're washing the vehicle, it's not getting put back into the bucket. What that'll do is that'll eventually cause those swirl marks on the vehicle, which is those little spider webs you see in the, in the light. So we're trying to limit that because this process right now is the most, uh, you, you, this is the, washing the car is always the, the time where you're gonna instill the, the most damage as far as swirl marks. So if we can limit the amount of dirt on the vehicle, along with inside of the solution, we're able to minimize that. 
Yeah. Which one are we using? Is it this one to wash? Oh, we're using the the wash and wax right that's now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So this has some gloss enhancers. It has some uh, so a, a small layer of wax in it that'll help protect the vehicle. If you don't use a last step product like this, like this one, bead maker, it'll give you a little bit of protection. Uh, so that way, if, if you just wash the vehicle really quickly and, and, and you got to run, at least you got something on there to protect it a little bit. So he's starting at the top. So the biggest rule when you're washing the vehicles you start from the top and you work from the front to the back because the flow of dirt will always be down this way you can see it on the on the panels majority of the dirt is underneath here and it kicks up to the back of the car so you always want to finish back here because you don't want any of that stuff re-going back into the bucket so you want to limit the amount of of dirt that you have in the bucket Maybe rinse. So try not to let the soap dry on the vehicle as much as possible. Another small little tip too, if you have a lot of protection on the vehicle, the water will tend to beat up a lot more and sheet off the vehicle a lot easier. So if you're, you know how everybody likes to put their finger on here and make the pressure come out? If you leave, if you just put a nice stream, it'll pull off a lot of the water so you don't have a ton of water on the vehicle. I had bug sponges too, I should have brought those. I have a question. Yes. Um, my Jeep always ends up covered in a little bit of salt when I leave this place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should you rinse your car every day to take that off, or that's a good question? And just you know, like every three days, rinse or right. something. <laughs> so that's a good question because you would think that you would want to get that salt off as much as possible. Um, which is which is true, but if you're gonna do that every day, what you're gonna end up having is a, is a now a water spot problem. So the water spot, especially the water quality here on island, it varies from place to place. 
but for the most part the water quality is really it's, it's pretty bad so you'll have calcium deposits and all kinds of other deposits on the vehicle and that that actually will damage your clear coat so what i recommend is making sure that you have a good layer of protection which would be the bead maker here you can layer that you can put two coats if you want on it you can put three coats if you want on it or you can start off like like i mentioned before i do a lot of ceramic coatings and so does so does darren that sets you up with a base that you can kind of let take some damage and then you can replace that every few years that way you're not damaging your clear coat with water spots and, and all of that other stuff i'm not going to say that that any of these protection is going to stop water spots from happening what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to kind of handle it without it damaging your clear coat if that makes sense yes thank okay. you no problem coming around All right, so now the vehicle is completely washed. I'm just gonna run the water over the top of the car one more time to make sure I can pull off any other soap that's on it. I can use both. I can use both. So, and then you wanna take your drying towel. These are, from auto fiber i don't know if they, but were they, they're not in the bucket yeah so you can see how big this one is and this is a smaller one so i have two different sizes and i'll, I'll zoom it in you can see the the texture on it it's nice soft it's a terry weave towel and this thing absorbs a ton of water and you'll see how much water it absorbs so you never want to scrub, just kind of let the towel do the work. Is that the yellow one you gave us in the bucket? Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Sorry. These are, um, I have these if you guys need, or you guys can order them off Amazon. Okay. I've got one. I don't know if it's like. A it, they'll work. If you, if you just use the regular microfibers from Costco, they'll work too. You just need a little bit more of them, but they work okay. just as good. Got it. Thanks. Evan, can you, um... Hi, I have a question. I'm not sure if you, you answered it. I came on late, but this is fine to use on, on vehicles that have been wrapped, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. You're talking about the stuff in the bucket? Yeah. Yeah. Should be perfectly fine. Uh, there's another question about what is the best way to get hard water stains off auto glass oh, okay that's a that's a really good question and that's a that's a um so pns has a product you, you brought some in yet the clarity cream um yeah, i got some coming okay so darren has some ordered that it's a glass polish and it's relatively mild so well, the thing about auto glass is that it's made from, some of these are made with different, um, some are laminate, some are safety glass. So when there's water spots and you use a polish to get them off, they might scratch the glass. So you just kind of got to be a little bit more mindful of what you're actually using on the glass. So the product that he has coming in, it's called Clarity Cream. Uh, it's a, it's a pink liquid that that is a glass polish and it's a real fine abrasive and you can use that to kind of clean off everything on the glass if it's fresh or if it's not like seeded into the glass yet it's a real good polish if it's really really bad i would recommend um, getting it professionally done mainly because once it gets to that point you're going to start having to use machines and you're going to have to start using certain chemicals that are that can cause damage if it's used incorrectly. So that's that's. I hope I answered your question. I have another question. It may not apply to you guys, but you know the glass headlights that are the whole unit that are expensive to to replace. 
but they get really yellow. Uh, headlights. Well, yeah. Will that cleaner that you were just talking about for the windows work on the headlights? Um, in theory, yes, but it's, I would use a, like you see a lot of things like toothpaste and, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the soda and all that. stuff like that. So what that is, is it's just a polish. So it has really fine abrasives in it. So you could just use an auto polish and use that and it would be able to clean it off. Again, it, it's, it's going to only determine how much protection you put back on it before it turns yellow again. Yeah, so when did, I, do, I did it about a year ago, and it's yellow already. Yeah, it's it because that polycarbonate layer, that layer is actually from the factory. So what happens is it gets hit by rocks, it gets hit by bugs, and it breaks down, and the, and the sun here will eventually start to make that thing yellow. Um, it happens to majority of the cars. So what what we have to do, what we do as detailers, we're going and we'll sand all of that stuff off. We'll mm -hmm. polish it back, and then we'll put a ceramic coating over it. So that way it'll at least protect it because you got to protect it from the UV. There's yeah, some yeah. things that you can see online that people will put on. What is the stuff they'll put on? the um, That painted on stuff? I forget. Um, I don't, you, you'll see a lot of things online. Yeah, that's, that's kind of crazy. But, but for the most part, every time you wash a vehicle, just use that on the, winch, uh, on the, on the lights. It'll help protect it. Uh, is it going to prevent it from turning yellow? Probably nothing will, but at least you can prolong that until that happens because it becomes a safety concern right. eventually, right, at yeah. night. So, yeah, that's a good question, though. Okay, but, so with that, um, with the lights, you can buy the kits from uh, Meguiar's, I guess, sells them at, at Home Depot and, and or not Home Depot, but Walmart, I think. And they work for the most part, but in order to get them really done correctly I, I would i would advise getting them professionally done and and for the most part they're not even close to how much a new set is right that's what i was gonna say because the new set is very expensive they're like 500 dollars. yeah i know <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah so that's a good question though okay thank you you like bead maker with, with just the uh, soft towel yeah okay So once the vehicle is dry, now we're going to put on the protection. So you can use a separate towel or you can use the drying towel or whatever towel that you have. My, my thing about bead maker, which I like a lot, is that you can put it on pretty much everything and it won't turn it yellow. Um, you know, it won't. Let me put this over here. I don't like those getting any dirt inside. So it won't turn anything yellow. It, you can put it on the plastics. You can put it on the windows. And the technique for putting this on, it, or one thing I, I want to caution about this is that if you have a dark colored vehicle, make sure that you're in the, out of the sunlight and you're in the garage. Because you want to make sure that you spread this thing out good enough or it'll streak on you. And, and that's, it's not a bad thing. You just got to come back and wipe it off. But if you do it in the shade where the car is cool, it won't, it shouldn't do that. So, you're like, don't worry. Okay. So, so Darren's gonna in, uh, put it on. So pretty much you can put it on when it's wet or if you can put it on when it's dry. It's really up to you. Um, I like to do it this way because you get more of the product on the vehicle. So you can start again from the top down, front back. Just got one more of those towels. I'll go help him. There we go. Let me work with you. I don't know if this applies either, but do you guys have anything to put on your exhaust pipe if it's all rusty? Or underneath rust, rust proofing. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I um, we that's I don't have that. I don't know who does who does rust proofing. You know, I don't know anybody on island that does rust proofing. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know anybody that does it anymore here on on Maui. But that's a good question, though. You guys should expand into that. <laughs> you need a lift for that. <laughs> yeah. You need a lift and then the insurance goes through the roof. <laughs> So protecting your vehicle is pretty much that easy. It's, it's, there's, there's no pace waxes that, you know, it, it, there is, but I mean, the industry is really moving away from those. Just look out, you can see how easy it is just doing it this way. And it's going to give you just as much, if not more protection than a regular pace wax. And you don't have to worry about the thing turning white and all the cracks and crevices. So Darren, uh, a few people would like to get some of the products. So you'll be sharing all that information with us, right? Yeah. Thank you. Also, one more tip. Anytime you're wiping on the vehicle, you never want to put go in circles. I know that we all watch Karate Kid and that's part of it. But when you wipe in circles, say if you get something in the towel, now you're making circles on there. Or if you get some dirt on the towel, at least if you go straight forward and back, the, the scratches or the little swirl marks will be in, in straight lines, so it won't be as noticeable. So just for the sake of um, of that, just go in straight lines. It's a lot easier. That way you can get better coverage also. You got the door. I would just soak the towel. So another thing about this product, it's a, it's a polymer based product. And if you have one of those, uh, maybe like reds or, or lighter colors, after you install it on the vehicle, usually at about an hour or, or two, once it starts to set in and you go back and look at your vehicle, it'll look a little bit different. Once this thing cures out, it's a, it's a cool product and you'll notice it when you install it on the vehicle. You need some more. You good. Don't what smell it. What product are we talking about? I missed it. What's that? What product are we talking about? We're talking about Bead Maker. So this is their flagship product. It's kind of their, their most famous one. What does it do? It's a protectant. So when you're done washing the vehicle, like I see you have a red car. Mm -hmm. Put that thing on after you're done. Just, just, just spray it on and wipe it. And then in a, in a couple hours, once it cures, it'll it'll really give it a glow. So you okay. won't notice it as soon as you put it on, but as it starts to cure out and set, you'll notice the thing look different when you go back and oh. look at the car. Okay, thanks. Yeah.
already see them starting to cure out, yeah. Also, you can put this on the rims uh, if you want after. So I would use anything you use for the rims, keep them separate. Don't put that thing onto the paint because usually it has brake dust and brake dust will be, um, you know, it, it, it'll scratch the paint. So you want to keep that separate. But when you're done, you can, you can use them on the rims as well and it, and it works just as good. I have a question. Okay. What on the interiors, like the dash and the seats. So in, they, he does have a, a PNS does have a uh, interior cleaner. It's called Express. You get some of those too, yeah. So he, he Express interior cleaner. You can dilute that down one to one also, and it does it does a really good job because it, it's neutral pH. So you can use it on leather. You can use it on vinyl. Um, even on some fabrics, but they do have a fabric system for your carpets if you wanted to do it yourself. Um, th th it's a relatively easy, it's a relatively easy system to use. Uh, but for the most part, for the express cleaner, um, it, it's pretty simple. You just spray it on, scrub it, and wipe it off with a microfiber. So right now he's he's applying Shine All, which is the tire dressing. It's a water-based tire dressing. To the vehicle so he's using a, a applicator you guys should have one of those in your in your bucket so you don't need a lot you can go ahead if you want to you can do the wheel wells also so right now he's just wiping down the wheel wells the plastics and what that'll do is that'll help you clean it the next time so a lot of that grime and and road, road, you know, just dirt and dust. It'll be easier to clean off. I have a question. Yep. Aloha. Um, you do we? I noticed you didn't clean the inside of the hub where the wheel sits in. Is that yeah. necessary to clean? Um, that's a good question. It, it does take a couple different tools to get in there. So they have things called wheel woolies. And they have other things with like brushes that, that uh, um, are on sticks. So you can actually do that with this product. You just got to spray inside and, and scrub it out from, from the outside. And you can use that. That's a good question. But you just need a little bit different tools. Um, do you to... have to clean that part? We do. Yeah, we, well, we do. Yeah, when, whenever I do a service, unless it's, it, you know, I, I, I do it. But for you at home, it's, it's really up to your preference. Yeah, because we live in Haiku, and it's like, what's the oh, point? <laughs> you get the, the dust. The mud. And, yeah. yeah. So, if if it's really bad, you'll need something a little bit stronger than Brake Buster to break through all of that stuff that's stuck on there. Um, but for the most part, just maintaining the wheels, and Brake Buster is an awesome product. It's very safe. Um, I wouldn't use anything abrasive on the rims or even, you know, the car in general. Some people like to use magic erasers sometimes and just stick to the really soft stuff. Don't, and if something doesn't come off, there's might be a chemical that might help, but never scrub onto your, onto your paint surface. See, as, as you can see, the, they're ni it's nice and shiny, but it's not greasy. So once you drive away, it's not going to throw itself all over the car. So when you look at tire dressings, the one that he has, it's, it's that white milky color. So it's, it's water based. It has solvent in it, but it's not a solvent based water cleaner. I mean, tire dressing. So when you see those that look like oil, those are the ones that never dry, that throw it all over your car. And not only that is it attracts dirt. So when it turns brown, that's, that's what it's, it never dries, so it just sticks. All, of, all the dirt just sticks. And not only that, to get it off, it's a nightmare. So stick to dress tire dressings that are water-based. It's a lot easier to clean. 
and you want it to come off every two weeks. You don't want it ever to be on there for a long period of time. Because if it's like that, then it's oil based. And then you're going to get these, you know, that, that really brown, I, I'm sure you guys seen it before, that really brown, kind of ugly looking tire. And sometimes people will just start layering it and layering it. And next thing you know, you have some tire dressing like that thick. And it's just, it's horrible to get off. So just stick to these, one, these. if you like it a lot shinier, after it dries, just put another layer on or another coat on it. For me, I like this look. The matte look is perfect. Um, it doesn't, you know, attract too much dirt. It looks good and, it, and it's easy to take off next time you wash it and it's easy to put back on. Reverse the car. Yeah. Bottom. You can get the bottom. So here's another tip that Darren's gonna show. So when you're done and you're done getting the tires all all dressed, you wanna reverse the car a little bit or move forward just a little so you can get the bottom of the tire. Because you don't want to be driving and have one area about three inches wide that's gonna be that's gonna not gonna be dressed. So you just roll it back a little bit. And then he's able to hit that other area that was underneath the tire. So for the most part, I like to do two rounds of tire dressing just to make sure that I get everything covered. I feel bad I'm not doing anything. So this product that you're using on the tires, you can use it on the trim, but he does have, you, you get the other one, yeah? You got the it. dynamic. Yeah. You can use it on the trim as well, which is that plastic part on the bottom, but there is a different product from, from PNS and, and it's called dynamic. It's a dilutable dressing that you can use on um, those areas like, like that and all of that areas. Also, it works good on the interiors as well. There you go. So that is your basic washing of the vehicle. Uh, it's, it's, with, with products like this, it makes it really easy. So if anybody has any more questions, we're, we're more than happy to answer them. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, how did you guys get into your career? What, what path did you take? Um, I, I don't know. I just, you know, I like cars. I, um, Going in, in, in high school, I, I painted, just played around with it. And when I got back, I got into the fire department that I needed something to do. And I, I just kind of stumbled onto it. Uh, I went to the mainland. I got trained. I got part of a couple groups that do a lot of projects on the mainland. And I got, you know, luckily I got exposed to this PNS brand and, and the people who run it. And they're really awesome people. And I met Darren because he's, he's a distributor for them. and. You know, that, I, I just been doing it ever since, and I kind of went more into ceramic coatings, which is a little bit more detailed of a detail, if that makes sense. It's just a, it's a, just another form of detailing, but there is a lot of guys on island that are that are coming up, and and a lot of younger guys that are that are hard work hardworking, and and they use very good products like this also. But for me, that's kind of how I, it just kind I just kind of fell into it, I guess. Um, it is a passion and it, it'll catch you every now and then. So I don't know. How, how did you get into it? Uh, just like you. Yeah. In high school, I loved my cars. So I got into uh, cleaning cars. I used to work at a car dealership and uh, that's where it, it started. Um, so back in 92, when I graduated from high school, I started my, my detailing business. And uh, I started detailing and then I got into selling car care product. Um, but I love what I do. No complaints. <laughs> um, 
It's fun. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but it's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it's fun. I, I don't think people realize how much work it is actually to yeah. do this. But the end result, I mean, just a simple basic wash, you can see how much better the car looks. And it's protecting the car also, especially with our environment. We have a pretty unforgiving environment here on Maui. So the, a lot of the stuff will, that we're bringing out and we're, we're showing you guys will help preserve your vehicles. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's how we, we kind of got started. Well, thank you for that. That's great info. I hope it doesn't rain today. <laughs> well, it's protected if it is. Yeah, <laughs> it does. it's a beautiful, beautiful car. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Hi, um, this is Julie, and I was curious, what, what do you suggest for older vehicles that the paint might be not so great? Um, you know, like there's wax or I right. don't know, like... So clear coats, if you, if you look at a piece of paper, your whole paint system is about is, is less than that. So you're talking about your E-coat, your primer, your base coat, and your clear coat. They're all thinner than a piece of paper. So eventually over time when you're washing or if you go through, you know, abrasive washes or you don't protect it from the sun, it'll oxidize. And what will happen is the clear coat will start to fail. So once it starts coming chalky or it starts to look, uh, what, what are the, you know, it's like oxidation, it'll, it'll look really, really faded and white. I, I want to say the whites, you know, the Toyota whites and stuff like that, they're all single stage paint. So they'll turn chalky regardless. They don't have a clear coat, but majority of the cars, if you start to see it start to get that white kind of hazy look, then it look, it's probably because your clear coat's failing and that's past our level of repair. If it is older and it's still healthy, I guess you could say. And and for me, I always take paint readings to see exactly how much paint I have if I'm going to polish a car. Because that's the last thing I want to do is burn through a clear. Um, I, I just make sure that they that you would understand that I can't get every scratch out in that, in that situation. It, what we're going to do is we're going to try and preserve the car, remove the oxidation, and then put a layer of protection, whether it be a ceramic coating or, or a wax or sealant, whatever you decide. So it'll really be based off of a visual estimate from me anyway. Um, and, and I don't know how, how you handle those. It's just both based off yeah. of visual, yeah? yeah? Yeah. So it'll be it'll be more of a visual thing, and I would have to check it and see. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Something that Darren mentioned was that perhaps if there's interest, he might do some other kind of more specialized thing like um, cleaning your light, yeah, your light yeah, and yeah. things. Yeah, sure. I mean, that, that's not a problem at all. Uh, it, it's those little services that, you know, that would be easy for you to do. Um, yeah, I'd be more than happy to do it in that sense. You know, so, yeah, I mean, you guys know Darren's number and he can always get a hold of me. As long as I'm off duty, um, I'll be more than happy to come down and, and help. I have one more question. I don't know if you answered it earlier, but how often or or not should you polish your car? Like some people maybe OCD and want to do it all the time. Okay. That's us. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, what we exactly. do. Exactly. I'm glad I didn't want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> so you talk. Um, so I, just to get the terminology clear, um, you mean protection, like wax, or just like a polish as far as removing scratches and, and machine polishing? Either or. Okay. So machine polishing. This is where ceramic coatings come into play. Yeah. And, and that's, that's where the difference is between something like a sealant is where I can remove this off the vehicle by using Dawn and water pretty much. I can strip this thing of this, this protection. Mm -hmm. But if I use that on a coating, majority of the time it won't, it won't be stripped. It, it, what it is, is it's kind of a resin based protection. And what we do a lot is we'll polish the car one time, get it to a point where it looks really, really nice and really shiny and clean and then we'll put a coating on it. So that will preserve it for whatever rated coating that you choose, whether it be one year, there, there's three years, there's five years, there's some coatings that say that it's 10 years um, rated. And what that'll do is it'll help keep your clear coat intact. It'll make it easier to clean and it'll look like it's waxed. So you don't have to consistently be, say, putting on a topper every day or every week or every, every two weeks. You can do it every month or so. But even in that situation, it gets kind of deep, but at least you're not 
consistently cutting down your clear coat because if you're polishing your car every every month or two months or three months you what we're doing is we're taking off clear off your car right, right. every time we polish so yeah. what we're doing is we're actually inflicting controlled damage to your clear coat so we want to limit that so that's why we put on ceramic coating so that way we can actually eventually when it starts to die we can strip it and put another layer so that way your clear coat which is what is really protecting your paint is going to be there to turn to help so i just wrapped my truck so the wrapping doesn't really have a clear coat no right? it doesn't but they do have ceramic coatings for wraps, wraps? right yeah i mean do uh, you use an opti opti get one no they get yeah, so usually with usually with wraps, what we'll do is we'll layer it because okay. it's really porous. We'll put yeah. two layers of coating on there just to make sure that the first layer gets absorbed and then we can put another layer over the top of it. And okay. what that'll do, usually it'll last you about a year or two, yeah, on, on wraps. For, but it, what it'll do is it'll help um, at least keep it clean yeah. for that, you know, and, and that way when you wash the vehicle, a lot of the dirt will come off. This product works really well on wrapped. Oh, okay. Bead maker Which works. one is that? The bead maker. Bead yeah. maker. Okay. This look. This works good on wraps, even if it's matte wraps. It's not going to make it too shiny. So okay, that's, no, that's a good a product wrap. for wraps. Okay, and then so if you don't do the clear, their whatever you're talking about, the upper level. The coating. Um. Yeah, the coating, and you just have a regular car, and you just want to. I don't know if you refer to it as waxing or polishing. How often would you do it? Like every couple weeks or once a month if you're if you're putting on this product so like, like let's say if, if you're using bead maker so mm -hmm. bead maker has a it'll be what about a month yeah durability i would say four weeks yeah it's not a super longevity one but it's a real easy product to put on so it's it you can kind of do it every time you wash it but what i like to do with this is i'll layer it so i'll put on heavy coats for like maybe two or three rounds which would be every two weeks or maybe every week um initially and then after that once you get a good little, little base layer just do it every month or so and you should be okay as far as protection from uv just limit like if you run it through the car wash it'll probably strip it yeah that was gonna be my next question okay. yeah they, they use really i mean it's i'm not saying that it's bad but it and because it works more abrasive. Clean, it's very abrasive and they use yeah. really strong chemicals they have to because they're not doing what we're doing we're not getting all, in all the cracks and crevices so yeah, they yeah. need to use those heavy detergents and sometimes acids to kind of melt all the dirt off. That way, when they get those brushes and the high pressure water, they can break down that stuff and remove it off the car. So this and this kind of stuff makes it a lot easier. Are you guys only focused on like the body of the car, not like the, under the hood or anything? We yeah. can, yeah, we can do. <laughs> I I do a lot of waterless washing, so I I hardly use water a lot often. So I I do a lot of waterless techniques because I'm okay. trying to limit my runoff. So if I do an engine, I'll, I'll usually steam clean it to limit it. Some guys, it's not difficult to kind of, just make sure you cover the electrical components. Nowadays, yeah. the, nowadays the it's, electric cars you gotta watch. I yeah, electric cars. Car, yeah. But as far as, as the newer cars, a lot of the stuff is encapsulated and enclosed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But you can, you, what you can do is you can spray on an all purpose cleaner and use a little brush and kind of agitate some of the stuff and then rinse it oh, off. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but okay. if you do have an older vehicle, I would make sure you cover, um, yeah, especially yeah. the distributor cap and, and a lot of Alternator. those other ones, alternators and stuff like that. Just cover those. You don't want water in those. Okay. And then also, what's so good about this bead maker? You can actually use it on your countertops, just to let you know. So it's a very great product on the countertops. Um, I think you shower. Put, you put that thing everywhere. <laughs> I that think awesome. Yeah. It's kind of like all. <laughs> it is. It is, and that's why that 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 product is so popular and one more thing i like to use that on is the interior plastics yeah so i'll use it on the exterior i'll wipe down the whole vehicle i'll have that tile that still has the sealant on it and i'll wipe down the interior of the vehicle and it'll it'll provide you a little bit of uv protection but it won't make it sticky you know that sticky feeling when you put like armor all and stuff like that on and it attracts all the dust it's, it'll it'll leave you with a nice sheen um dry surface to inside your vehicle so that it's not slippery yeah that's that's i mean yeah that it's, it's a good product you know they, they just made five years actually so this this is the fifth this is the first day huh? you seen that 
So today, that's been on the market for five years today. And you guys been using this on Air Force One? We have. Right? So I've been a part of the Air Force One project in, in Seattle, Washington, um, two years, 18 and 19. But this year it was canceled, of course. But we use these on all the planes, all the old planes. So we, we'll, we'll put, a, put a nice layer of, of, of bead maker on those planes, and it helps preserve them at the museum. And it's actually approved by Boeing as well. So oh, that's nice. that's another cool thing. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you, Darren and, and Jeremy you. for helping us today. Yeah, and no Thank problem. Thank you, Deanna and, and, and your team. Thank you. Take care. Thank we'll you guys. Again. Happy Thank little Friday. You. Yeah, thank you Bye. guys so much. For the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Nice All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>